Hey everybody, I'm Robert and I'd like to welcome you down here to the Apex Barn. Uh, today I am answering one of your guys' questions that is actually about the Norchleife and the question was quite simply, why the Norchleife? Um, how can you do so many laps on the Nürburgring or the Norchleife and afterwards feel like you don't want to go anywhere else? And finally, is there any other track in the world that you would compared to the Nordschleife or maybe rather be at or could also live with being at? It's actually a really good question because the Nürburgring to many people is a special place and I think it's justified. I think that the fact that so many people around the world want to come here, we get messages all the time that it's my dream to come to the Nürburgring, it's my dream to come to Apex, it's my dream to go in the GT2 RS taxi. Um, it says a lot because growing up and being around cars, I never was uh, fixated on I'm one day going to go to Spa or one day I really want to drive Monza. Uh, there are people, believe me, that say that because that they're into that. Maybe they watch Formula One and their favorite racer grew up in that area or their favorite race team always does well on that track. And, and so maybe there is a tie to it, but nowhere near like what you have at the Nürburgring. There are fans of the Nürburgring around the entire world. And I'm obviously uh, one of those people. The Nürburgring is a special place because when you go out on the track and you are uh, maybe the first lap of the day, it's fresh, the sun is rising, and maybe there's condensation on the track from the night before. And the track throughout the entire day is changing. It's always evolving, uh, whether it's getting hot or cold. We've had laps where it's been snowing in one spot, sunny in another. It's been raining in one spot, snowing, and then sunny in another. And that, that's what happens when you have a track that's this long. There's no other track in the world that is as, as long as the, as the Nürburgring. And that brings its own sets of challenges. It's a, such a long uh, uh, set of asphalt that you actually have construction zones during the winter and you're learning a new section uh, in, uh, each spring. Um, the earth is constantly moving and you do notice bumps that are getting gradually worse or, or things of that nature. And that's really is an amazing experience, but it's not just the racetrack, it's also the atmosphere around it. Right now we're sitting in the Apex Barn and uh, we're literally 800 meters uh, from the entrance to the Touristenfahrten car park. Likewise, the other direction, we're 800 meters to the, where the Grand Prix entrance is and the paddocks and everything like that. And the Nürburgring actually runs 360 degrees around this building that we're sitting in. If there were cars on track right now, you would actually hear them go down the Dodinger Hoa, down into Tiergarten right behind our building, and then you would start to catch them again as they come around back to T13 and start to work their way down towards Hatzenbach. You hear all that right from this building. And that's pretty special. The N24 race when you're here, it just sounds amazing. 360 degrees, GT3 cars, GT4 cars, TCR cars, everything you could imagine running for 24 hours around you. You're at night, the windows are open, it's just a buzz. And that's a really special thing to think about that, yeah, there's other racetracks that have 24 hour races. There's other racetracks that have buildings on the inside, but not full towns. We have the full town of Nürburgring in the middle of the Nürburgring. We have Adenau, which is essentially split by the Nürburgring. Quiddelbach, which is right inside of the Nürburgring. This is an actual car culture and a community that is based around a racetrack. It doesn't matter what day of the week you're here and what day of the year you're at the Nürburgring, there's something going on car related. Is it people that are testing for cars during, uh, during the season, during the weekdays? Is it tourist and farting? Is there a race going on? Is it a bike race on the Nürburgring? There's always something that's happening at the Nürburgring. And that's something I've never experienced anywhere else in the world. If you guys have a racetrack that actually has communities based on it, employment based on it, businesses that have sprung up and been able to, to, to thrive and prosper, based on a racetrack, please definitely let me know in the comments because I want to go check it out. But to this date, I have not found anything that has over the course of a season, eight months of actual track use where I can go on the track any day that I want to. In fact, you guys laugh, the track is actually closed today. I've got my season pass in my jacket. This is my Apex jacket, my uniform jacket, if you would. It's got my lap ticket in it. And any day of the week, I can just run out there, go for a lap and have some fun. I don't need to book a track day to do that. I don't need to plan ahead. I don't need to have my car delivered. I don't need to have uh, or bring my car and hope I got brake pads and someone to service it. If you're on the Nürburgring and you have a problem, there are countless shops around that can take care of your car. There's 
um, hotels all over the place. Some of the hotels have views onto the racetrack. It is something that's unparalleled in the rest of the world. And to me, that's why I love the Nürburgring. Just in the last couple of weeks, we have been here working at Apex and we're running the taxis, running the rental cars, whatever it may be. And sometimes you get caught up in work and occasionally you get that moment, like maybe you guys see it on Misha's uh, YouTube channel right now. Him and I took his, his Golf Mark IV for his TDI Golf Mark IV for a lap, which he's uh, nicknamed the tractor. And that car is no race car. But you know what, it's something that we just casually said, hey, let's just go for a lap. He's been driving it primarily on the racetrack and he's building it along the way. And we just went out and had an absolute blast, a good laugh. You, there's no other racetrack in the world that you can just be hanging out with your friends right out here in the yard and say, hey, you know what, let's go take your, your Golf uh, Mark IV and drive it as fast as we want to, do whatever we want, hit curbs, take curbs, and, and have a laugh. There's nowhere else in the world that you can do that. We have the ultimate back road, literally 800 meters from our house, with full support from companies like Team Shermer, Monty Racing, uh, all the way through independent shops like uh, Philip across the street. And it's, it's really amazing. It's, like I said, you, you don't have it anywhere else in the world. And that evolves into the next thing is, well, wouldn't you get tired of that? Wouldn't you get tired of having this at your fingertips? Well, in short, no. This year, I'll bump over 6,000 laps on the Nürburgring. And for me, after 6,000 laps, I'm learning every single lap. I'm learning something new about the track, something new about different cars. I just took uh, the GTR Pro here from Tim and then his SLS Blackout for some laps, um, I guess, a couple days ago. And it, for me, it was fun because not only am I on the track, I'm on the track with a new car. I'm learning a new car. And you have this huge number of cars that come around and that you get access to, whether a manufacturer says, oh, do you want to go try this? Or, uh, or, or a friend comes with, with their cars and says, do you want to go out in this? There's so many different opportunities to experience different cars that that keeps it fresh alone. But the simple fact that the Nürburgring is always evolving and that you're always learning something new. They put a new border stone here. They change the curb there. They change the hump at Schradenkreuz. And you're always finding out how to be a smoother driver, how to be a more efficient driver. You maybe take care of your brakes better, take care of your tires better. And I am a person that will get tired of things, but I, after 6,000 laps, I'm not tired of the Nürburgring. And that says a lot about it. I'll go on GP tracks. I'll go on the Nürburgring GP track. And after maybe two 15 minute sessions in a week, I, I'm good. I've done the laps. I've had fun with it, but I want to get back on the Nürburgring. There's a certain skill that you have to have that presents a certain challenge that you have to be prepared to, to take on. And that is that you're on a very narrow racetrack. It's one of the more narrow racetracks that allows this many cars on it in the world with very little runoff on the side. There's points where um, we're touching our mirror as we turn into T13. You know, we're literally right there. There's been times I thought, oh, did I just hit that? You know, get out and check and know the mirror's still good because you, you get that close to it. There's very few tracks where there's that many places um, Infineon or Sears Point or whatever they're calling it in, in Northern California these days is similar. They've got some close concrete walls and things like that, but it doesn't have anything on the length and the complexity of the Nürburgring, the, the challenges. I also really love, like I said, the, the, the challenge that it presents you as a driver from this ever-changing conditions and what, if it's weather related, if it's um, how hard it is on the car. I made a video previously about how you're running up three and a half kilometers uh, from from when you get come out of Hochheischen into uh, the foxhole and your full power that whole way. Same thing, another three and a half kilometers when you come out of uh, Ex Mula all the way up to the carousel. And then you're still charging up Hoa Oct at a, at a pretty high pace. And that's so hard on the car. You're managing the temperatures in the car, thinking about what gear you want to be in, not just for ultimate speed, but making sure that the car is going to continually lap. And, and, and it really is a challenge for you to work with the car to make sure that it's going to continue working. By the time you've done one lap on the Nordschleife, you've done a, a, a maybe four or five laps on a, a GP track, and that's pretty impressive to think of. So if you're back-to-back -back lapping and you do 10 laps, did you just do 40 or 50 laps on a GP track? That's more than some race, uh, races in a race series. So um, for me, the Nürburgring is just a special place. It's a place that I really enjoy being able to take my family out on, to just take a spontaneous lap with friends. Like I said, we did that lap with Tim and it was just nice. It was no expectations, just relax. Hey, let's drive this car, let's drive that car. And you get to just go out and have fun. And there's no time pressure because it's here tomorrow. It's here the next day. It's your other friends are gonna come, your family's coming up. I've got an amazing video with Maximus coming out that I'm so proud of. He basically 
it, he gave me instruction laps casually. We were just talking and you'll see how it unfolded. And he starts giving me instruction laps from uh, Kesselchen all the way through Flansgarten. And he's telling me, okay, you want to be over here to this side and turn in now, now out. And he knows where the car's supposed to be at seven years old. It was his 500th lap on the Nürburgring. And as a parent, that's something you're really proud of. And, and for your kids to take in what you're sharing with them, you can't do that anywhere else in the world. Uh, if I was in California, I'd be in jail by now for taking my kid for 500 laps on any racetrack there. You get half, not you guys, but <laughs> whenever the videos go out on the internet, people are like, oh, th th this is insane. You can't do this. We're very careful. We share the passion for the Nürburgring. It's something that we do together. And these are the things that you can do at the Nürburgring that you can't do anywhere else in the world. And we are very lucky to be able to have it. Um, so no, I'm not tired of the Nürburgring after 6,000 laps. I don't expect to be after 12,000 laps. Um, it's a special place where in the heart of the Nürburgring, it is literally a community that's built on the racetrack. And it's a community that's always here. It's a living community. We have friends and faces that we know that are always here. They're reliable people that, that you see day in and day out. Um, you have so many lives that are made from this place and it really is special. So nope. I don't get bored of it. I don't have any other racetrack in the world that I um, feel like I would rather be at. And one of the often asked questions is, do I expect to ever expand Apex to another racetrack? And that's also a definite no. Apex is a brand that's built for the Nürburgring at the Nürburgring. And I think when you try to go to volume and you try to expand, you reduce your quality and you spread yourself thin. So Apex will remain at the Nürburgring with no major expansion plans. And that's by design, it's what we want. But Great question. I hope that answered it as best as I possibly could today. And uh, you guys have been absolutely amazing. Please continue putting your ideas and your feedback down in the comments because literally every video we've done as of recent has been from you guys. Uh, it's been from your feedback. And I think it's actually been what has made the channel so cool. So many of you guys comment, oh, really good content. That's ideas that you guys have that are asking us what our opinions are. So anyways, hope you enjoyed and we'll catch you later.